Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Hope you have a wonderful day. Um, in today's video, we're going to talk about the part three of finance tips that will change your view of money. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, comment. That'd be much appreciated. So this is um, yeah part three mm -hmm. of the mini series. Let's say, um, oh. let's get straight into it. Yeah, the first one is now uh, learn how to save. Up. So it means. You have to learn to appreciate what you have, mm -hmm. not accumulate any more things. That's literally what I did this morning. So you were sleeping, kids were still sleeping. I woke up so early after a long night and I was on the phone, Black Friday. Oh, this hat looks good. I've seen it many times. Click. My friends have a similar one. It looks really nice. <laughs> Click. Oh, put it in the cup. Click. And I'm thinking, oh, I have so many hats. <laughs> Do I really need it? No, they delayed. <laughs> and then another, and another one. Oh, I want a a bigger picnic rug because ours is just too small one. I like just one item. Why do I need two item? So I click searching. Oh, there are these giant rug. Click. Oh, but I need more. Um, I need to spend more to get a free, free shipping. shipping. Okay, click. Oh, clearance for kids jacket. Oh, yeah, for, for, for 12 years old, my son is only seven. Okay, only one size, I'm sure he will fit in. Click, look at the cup. Uh, almost $200, do I really need it? The, the, the rug, and, I, and I talk to myself, the rug is okay, I still can use it. Like, why do I need such a big one, it's hard to carry. And I'm back, you late. <laughs> so I wasted my whole morning talking to myself. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like that. Like, like when you when you when you hold your phone, when you go through media and things, they always have something to sell you. Yeah, that's true. Like you really have to learn to, to appreciate stop, what you have. Stop being tricked as well. And then look, like I have two racks already. Why am I still looking for a third one? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, that, wow, that was extreme. I didn't know yeah. that you were going through that much. Personally, in, in my head, yes. Wow. Okay. That's why all my gray hair is coming. <laughs> <laughs> the next one will be, if you can, get a money buddy. A uh, money buddy, it, it is a bit hard to uh, come by. Mm. Um, you know, when it comes to personal finance, it leaves it a little bit daunting. Mm. Um, it's something that you don't talk about in a regular basis. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure um, one way or another, you're bound to find somebody that is thinking the similar thing way that you're doing um, and that can yeah. contribute on uh, figure out where you are in life when try to push you to go towards your goal I feel like um, guys talk about money more than girls or you maybe so. just the group like Depending in general group. I think it seems like guys are more easier to oh, like to start a conversation about money mm -hmm. and for girls it seems like it's easier to start a conversation about shopping Spending. I feel like it. Spending, spending, yeah. spending. That's right. So, yeah. Like for me, and then, like, I don't know, I found it, personal finance is one of the topics that is hard for um, people to open up by. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, it's, it's a bit hard for just talking about it. Yeah, that's in, right. In general. Yes, it is very hard to open the conversation and unless you, you, you know the people, the person for a long time already and they open up about the, the finance as well. Mm -hmm. So the next one also, when negotiating salary, mm -hmm. get a company to name the figure first. So you, they did it for you, right? They, I think when you, started, yeah, I remember yeah. that you were on a phone call Yeah. and then um, they offer you how like to work for full time and you mm -hmm. ask him, what's the figure? Yeah. It's always better when you go negotiation, get them to tell you the figure first and then you go from there. Of course, they're going to give you a lower number, mm -hmm. and which means you're going to go for a higher number. Mm -hmm. And it'd be amazing, like the negotiating skill that you, you can learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I'm actually yeah. hiring um, to a couple of departments mm -hmm. in our uh, in the company, and we we put it, I guess, a way of okay. Then I know there's a, a, a my budget is about seventy thousand, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a salary package that we're looking at mm. and but at the same time instead of us telling them hey the role comes for this amount mm -hmm. I actually wait what are you expecting <laughs> it's very hard though but then you, you guys receive such a big massive range 
<laughs> yeah, big brain. <laughs> so, mm. you know, there are people out there that is um, like my, for example, yeah, the package I'm looking at is about 70. Mm. Um, there are people out there that's like up to 200,000 that is applied. Mm -hmm. um, there are people out there that's like mm, 85, 100, and then it goes up to, you know, 65, mm. somewhere around there. So um, you'd be amazed. Like sometimes... And I was talking to one of our colleagues about this. He goes, well, you wouldn't know unless you try, right? Yeah, so. that's right. Or maybe maybe they're just bluffing about the number, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then the next one will be? Um, yeah, you can negotiate more than just your salary. Yeah, so based on that alone, let's say, mm -hmm. um, based on that um, example of $70,000, mm -hmm. instead of having the 70000 how about you get, you know, maybe additional allowance for study uh, for travel mm. allowance mm. or for, to pay for your vehicle or to um, what else is that? For example, you have the car allowance mm -hmm. and for example, I'm doing my, my full-time work only because they offer offering me flexible hours. Yeah. But I still, I don't know, I feel like um, as an employer, they, they, they tend to track you down within that 95 or 84 or whatever those working hour because that's normally what... Um, where everyone is being active, so they want you to work in those hours. Mm -hmm. I'm just grateful, um, the my, my friend, the husband, who employed me and then gave me the option, you can do those hours and then deal with the kids, do everything about the family first, and then at night time when you have time, please go work for yeah. a bit, few more hours. And actually it helps because I don't have to just stay there and wait for work. I yeah. feel like it's kind of wasting of time yeah. when there's no work, but I still have to strap down in front of the computer and even though you're not work. doing anything exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the next one will be um try i guess make your salary decision mm. at your current job about your company's benefits and needs mm. um you know sometimes you can go hey i can add value because of xyz yeah you know? um like at the moment when i'm hiring that person it's mm. like okay then your skill level is in here mm -hmm. and then your set level you, what you can do is this 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 and mm -hmm. sometimes they look at that oh yeah i could see the benefits of that so that's the reason why we're willing to pay you a bit more yeah and so. then remember a few months ago your current company they acquiring mm -hmm. another company and there will be additional duties to do and you were really stressful <laughs> and um you know um the, the managing director just uh -huh. told you, oh, I, I'm going to additional, give you all these with this amount. And you say, no, 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 I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this responsibility. Yeah. I, I don't need a pay rise. I don't want to do extra. But he said, no, no, it's automatically pay yeah. rise. You just, but yeah. you still have to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes it comes in two, two ways, whether yeah. you go out there and like, hey, I can add value because X, Y, Z. But for us, it's like, no, I don't want an extra X, Y, Z because I know what that comes with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of other work. Exactly, yeah. involved. Anyway. So that's just another story, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the next one will be um, in this section of the video, we're going to talk about how to keep debt um, down yep. in a sense or mm -hmm. in, in range, let's say. Yeah. Um, start with small debt and help you conquer big ones. So with us, when it comes to paying off debt, um, I guess in a sense, like try to do the small amount for us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter when it comes to interest. Yeah, it gives you the motivation, the psychological thinking behind it, and if you have polished that small debt and then go to the bigger one, the bigger one, and it that like you have this motivation of if I can tackle this little one, mm -hmm. I can go to the next one, mm -hmm. to the bigger one. And then the bigger one. Yeah, at the beginning, I always like looking at the interest rate. Why? Why? It doesn't make sense because this debt, you got to pay more interest rate. Why can't you pay it off first? Yep. But it's only if that is a smaller debt that makes sense because it will take you longer to pay it off and you will think, oh, it takes forever. I will never mm -hmm. ever finish it. So it will give you, it may give you the negative um, mind and thought, and then which means you may not be able to do it because yeah. you said so. You lost motivation as well. Yes. Yeah, mm. it, you, you always overthink it. Let's say, you know, the, the an example of mm -hmm. this, let's say mm. uh, you have two and a half thousand dollars in debt and mm. that's a, say 30% as an example, mm. very extreme. Mm. But you also have a ten thousand dollar in debt, but that's at five percent. Mm -hmm. Due to the interest rate alone, mm. just like looking at the interest rate alone, 
it probably makes sense to pay off the ten thousand dollar one. Yeah. Yeah, as an example. But psychologically, when you pay off that the small amount first, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it feels much better. If I can tackle that two and a half thousand dollar debt mm-hmm. and if I can manage to pay that down, what stops you to go to the ten thousand dollar one? That's right. So I did that myself. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even focused on the interest rate. I was just focusing on, I just got to get this down. Mm-hmm. I got to pay this off. I got to pay this off. If I can tackle that one, I can then tackle the next one. And before you know it, you'll be tackling the biggest debt, which is your mortgage. Yep. So even the mortgage at one stage, we're looking around, we should really shop around for a mortgage and like, no, just pay it off. Just pay it off. Just pay it off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just feel like shopping around is so much trouble. You, know, you have to apply all these documents again. Uh-huh. No, I'm um, down. No, no. <laughs> and next, don't ever co-sign alone, like with your friend, family with members, your family member, mm-hmm. because once it when it comes to money, it's really hard to do with a friend or even like siblings, because eventually you may have different view, and yeah. you may some let's say if you get along and buy a house together. And then eventually maybe someone, let's say divorce, mm-hmm. or maybe someone need money to, and then they have to sell it, which means you have to sell it as well. That's yeah. the problem. And then mm. what for, if the business venture didn't go, uh, it goes sour yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah, business as well, partnership. Yeah. Mm. And if that goes sour, your relationship would go deteriorate. Yes. And you don't want that, especially mm. when it comes to someone that you love the most, mm. um, family member especially, or if not your closest friends, because that relationship would, um, you know, it's not going to be the same again. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I remember feeling the same thing, you know, mm. I borrowed money from someone, uh, mm. a close friend of mine, and it, every time I see them, like, I feel like I owe them, mm. like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> not just the financial side of it, like, the financial side of it, that luckily I was able to pay it off mm. um, but at the same time every time we go out and just have dinner or lunch with them it's like I still owe you oh. <laughs> yeah you have that feeling so, uh, it's the, the feeling of like oh, no matter what mm-hmm. I'll never be able to repay you because you've yeah. helped me so, in so many ways yeah. so anyway that's just our two cents guys hopefully uh, this helped you guys out when it comes to personal finance as well as tips that will change the way you think about your money mm-hmm. um, if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, comment. See you next time. Bye. Bye.